as you probably know, the ID3, which has been around for over a year now, is um, Volkswagen's, uh, well, it's not a replacement, but it's its equivalent of the Golf in electric form. And it kind of looks like a Golf, but not really, especially if you look at its proportions. And we're going to have to get used to this, because all EVs are um, changing the traditional proportions we know. And by that I mean, um, they have more greenhouse for their uh, respective um, wheelbase. So as you can see in the ID3, the windscreen starts, well it's around here, which is more or less uh, in the center of the, um, of the front wheel. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. And there's this huge quarter light here that suggests um, just how far forward, how pushed forward it is. There's not really a lot to say about this car's exterior design. Although I frankly really, really like these 20 inch wheels. I also quite fancy these um, kind of cool graphics here. They are stickers and they will probably peel in time, but they look nice. And they are finished in the same Yes, it's gold, yeah, in the same gold as this strip that highlights the greenhouse. It's, um, it's a car. It's somehow even less exciting than a Golf. Probably the single most exciting part about it are these um, dimply things. Most of the front end is covered, it doesn't really have a grill air comes through here though. This is actually the um, new, the revised uh, Volkswagen logo. Looks exactly the same, but it's all new. These are um, full LED headlights, which are also standard on this Pro trim level model. In terms of its wheelbase, it's slightly longer than a Golf, but um, Volkswagen promises that it offers a uh, similar room to a Passat. I really like this um, embossed Volkswagen inscription here. It's really cool. So this is the ID3 from the rear. I think it's the better angle. I don't really like it from the front that much. But it's got the, um, this particular example has a, an IQ light, which is um, also a full LED set of lights that have animations and dynamic turn signals. I really like these logos, uh, finished in white, and this ID3 logo as well. The trunk is not massive, but it's, um, it's comparable to that of a Golf. Even though this car is roughly the size of a Golf, you have as much room in it as in a Passat. Let's see. So the front seat is set for my driving position. Fairly far back, I would say. I'm six foot tall, or 183 centimeters tall. But will I fit in the back? Let's see. It's great. Okay, so let's hop aboard. So this is how much legroom I have. Should have kept the door open so you can see. But I can slide my feet underneath the seat and I have ample room in all directions, even headroom. Even though this vehicle has the panoramic sunroof, I can sit upright and I'm still not touching the roof. Very good. You also have these pockets behind the seat. So two of them up front 
and one larger one there and two USB-C's. It must be said that I also like the design of the door cards. I think they are quite funky, especially in this example with this uh, um, orange pleather. <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of nice. I like it. And these um, striations, I guess? They are really cool, even though the plastic is not the best. Behind the wheel is where all the action happens, naturally. This is how you open the front windows. Normally. But in order to open the rear ones, what you actually have to do is, you need to press on where it says rear here. Rear lights up. And then... So the instrument cluster in the ID3 is identical to the ID4 that I tested. So it's um, it's actually quite small. It uh, it's around five inches. Let's see how snappy it is. It's snappy. Let's see. Let's quickly switch to something so it takes a bit to load but it's it's fine just like in the ID4 this is your um, selector for the transmission so you push up on it or you push forward on it rather once and um, you are in drive and then you push it again and you are in B mode which is maximum region and if you want to uh, select reverse, you double click it back towards you. Just like in the ID4, uh, VW opted for these uh, touch controls here on the, on the steering wheel and they work well enough. I don't have a problem with them. I find myself using the uh, um, volume buttons in both ways. So you can either swipe or you can just press them, whichever way you prefer. I think both ways are better than this way of adjusting the volume. This slidey thing here is um, not the best, especially if your hands are moist or you're a bit sweaty or, and that happens because you're a human. I also like the white leather on some uh, on some surfaces, like the steering wheel, the, st the airbag cover, um, this trim here, that trim there. And I also want to point out that even though these seats aren't the um, sport seats, they actually have an adjustable thigh support, which is really cool. Uh, I would want that in any car. The driver's seat itself is um, electric. The center tunnel is used for two cup holders. This storage thing where I just throw my wallet, a wireless charging pad, and this cubby thing here. So these are some uh, optional comfort seats, I would imagine. They are fully electric. It says um, this. So I assume it has a massage function. Yeah, this is a massage function. Cool, I'll try that out later. I just noticed that there's a small ID logo here. Oh yeah, the pedals. I wanted to mention them. So, um, while I think they are definitely cool with the play and stop buttons there, um, I would have liked the go pedal, the right pedal, to be hinged on the floor, not hang from above like that because I found it quite uncomfortable on my um, on my ankle, to be honest. Okay, so my first time driving the ID3. I've actually been quite excited to drive this vehicle because, um, well, it's, um, it's relatively affordable. It's rear-wheel drive. It has enough power to be fun. And um, yeah, I have high expectations. Volkswagen 2 has high expectations because it considers this its third most important vehicle after the original Beetle and the Golf. 
So what is the exact spec of this vehicle? Well, it's actually very interesting. So it has the most powerful rear wheel drive motor that you can get on an ID3, which uh, puts out 204 horsepower. But what's interesting is the fact that it doesn't have the big battery pack. It actually has the 58 kilowatt hour battery pack, which uh, reduces its weight versus the 77 kilowatt hour pack from 1859 kilos to 1719 kilos. That's a huge difference. And as a result, uh, the performance with the same uh, motor, the same rear mounted motor, is better. So my tester today with the 58 kilowatt hour pack uh, sprints to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.3 seconds, while the vehicle with the larger battery pack achieves the same sprint in 7.9 seconds. But wait, there's more! Um, efficiency is also better because this vehicle is lighter. So the 58 kilowatt hour pack car uses 15.5 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, whereas the one with the larger battery uses 16.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Yes, you do get a um, bit less range, obviously, because the battery is smaller, and it drops from a WLTP claimed 542 kilometers to 424, between 408 and 424. I assume depending on um, spec, wheels, I guess, that kind of stuff. So how does this uh, vehicle uh, perform on the road? Well, just like other ID vehicles from Volkswagen, well, the only one is the ID4, the ID3 starts when you uh, press the brakes. So the, there, there is a start-stop button here on the right of the steering column, but you don't have to use it. The car will turn itself on when you climb aboard and it will turn itself off when you, uh, well, when you put it in park and open the door. Okay, let's go. So foot on the brake, move the selector into drive, uh, so auto hold is enabled. I just lightly tap the go pedal and the vehicle starts moving. I need to... Um, use the sat nav in order to reach my Airbnb. Yeah, it was somewhere around here. So does this vehicle have, oh, I have to, ah, oh, I have to drive without glasses to see the augmented reality uh, head up display. I've used it on the ID4, but I'm going to try it out today and see what it's like. So yeah, it's projecting arrows. I hope this uh, GoPro here in the back can catch this. Can I make the HUD brighter? Let's see. Uh, brightness, so it's at 100%. Okay, now that we're in a shadier place, um, I can see it so much better. And frankly, it's a very good system because it overlays information over what you see, basically. So you no longer have to uh, look at the sat-nav or do anything, really, other than keep your eyes on the road. Many manufacturers are uh, looking into um, augmented reality head-up displays, but only Volkswagen and Mercedes, to my knowledge, have implemented it. I just need to forget not to go over the speed limit. You don't want to do that in Germany. And saying that I'm already speeding. But I still think it's safe. Very low speed limits, I might add. Lots of 30 km per hour zones. Although in Europe, uh, many big cities are considering uh, lowering the maximum speed at which they allow vehicles to travel in the city. Paris has set the tone, for instance, lowering its speed, its um, maximum allowed speed within the city from 50 kilometers per hour to 30 kilometers per hour. I'm not sure I'm on board with that. I think it needs to be uh, decided on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. 
And while I'm sure it promotes road safety, I don't know, 30 kilometers per hour just seems super low. Like modern cars can stop very quickly from even higher speeds. Ooh, what a nice Ford. What a nice pickup. What a nice Subaru. WRX STI wagon, Impreza. What is this? It's a Triumph. It's a Spitfire, if I'm not mistaken. Very nice. So, my augmented reality head-up display is telling me to go right, which I'm going to do. You're very welcome. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I've already driven the ID4 with the same motor, but with the bigger battery pack. And I also drove the Skoda ENIAC that also has this motor and the bigger battery pack, the 77 kilowatt hour pack. But what excites me about the ID3 is that it has the same uh, very punchy 200 horsepower motor and far less weight, as I previously mentioned. And as a result, it should be far punchier. Kyle from Out of Specs, for instance, says that he was pleasantly surprised just how quick this is. And he was the one who pointed out that um, the smaller battery pack could have a big impact. And then I checked the numbers and it's almost 200 kilos, 100-ish kilos difference. Kyle also did a, a top speed run in this uh, ID3 and it's not particularly exciting. Although the only place in the world you can do it legally is Germany. Oh yeah, it's, it's punchy, definitely punchy. Let's put the vehicle in sport. Let's see if it has adaptive dampers. Air con, da, 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 it does not. I'll just put it in sport then. I often like to drive uh, vehicles that have an individual setting in, uh, in sport mode with everything in its sportiest setting, but I always dial the suspension down because, um, well, where I live in Romania, the roads are sh for the most part. Such a lovely day for a ride. Should I do a launch here? Is this permitted in Germany? So nobody is coming. Left on the brake, right on the gas, and I let it go. Picks up kind of slow, but then it really goes. Okay, it's quick, it's quick. Slightly more sluggish off the line than I would have expected. Let's do that again, so no cars around. It's perfectly safe. It doesn't pin you to your seat, but it's quick enough. It's, it's nice. One thing that impressed me about the um, ID4 was that the steering was actually remarkably direct and quite communicative. And it allowed you to place the car. And the wheels also have quite a lot of lock. So as a result, when you um, apply a lot of lock to the steering wheel, um, the car is uh, very, very quick to move, to change direction. And I'm noticing the same here, but even more so, the ID3 feels more agile and even better to drive than the ID4. So the ID3 is a very pleasant little car and it's very relaxing, although when you want to stab it, it will go as if stabbed. It really does go. Let's stab it again. I like this about EVs very much. Just the instant acceleration, the instant response. Even in lower powered vehicles, it's still uh, noticeable and it makes them feel even punchier than their uh, figures on paper would suggest. And away we go. So yeah, as I was saying, it's super quick to turn, the ID3. 
It's very rewarding to drive, as I am discovering. I really want to get one of these in Romania and take it to a, a mountain road and really drive it properly around some, uh, some hairpins. It should be pretty good, even though you cannot disable um, the driving nanny, so the traction control and the ESP cannot be disabled. But still, it's, the chassis is balanced, center of gravity is low, only the rear wheels um, are powered, so it should be great. Anyway, thanks for watching this video until the end, and until I see you again in the next one, take care.